The Medical Protection Society to increase annual subscriptions for private doctors. And a fatal shooting at the CIA in Afghanistan. The Medical Protection Society says it has had to increase the annual subscription fee for private doctors by about 185% in the past two years to keep up with escalating claims. Head of the Society's Medical Services, Graham Howarth, says the value of medical claims for negligence has increased by over 130%. He says the most expensive settlement was for 17 million rand involving a neurosurgeon after a patient suffered severe spinal damage. South Africa was relatively quiet and now at the moment the increase in claims is more pronounced in South Africa than it is in any of the other territories where we work. I think the one might be the road accident fund, the changes there. Um, and then secondly, probably the Contingency Fee Act, where the lawyer is allowed to double his hourly fees and take a maximum of 25% of an award. So if you're looking at a 16 million rand award, then the lawyer can take up to 4 million rand of that. Minerals Minister Susan Shabangu has ordered mining company Central Rand Gold to stop operating with immediate effect. CRG has former convict and millionaire businessman and so-called sushi king Kenny Kunene as a shareholder. CRG has been found to have breached rules related to its mining rights. Department spokesperson Beki Kumalu. These mining companies must uh, understand that these are serious commitments on behalf of the people of South Africa. They are social and labor plan commitments. They are mining works programs that they give us. And in this case, there's every reason to believe that these were not thought through properly. They have not even implemented the tenth of the commitments that they have made, despite repeated warnings by the department to implement various provisions of their rights that they were given by the minister. And that is why the minister, as we are telling them now, has decided to shut down this mine, meaning that we expect them immediately, forthwith, uh, to cease operations because they have now lost the mining rights uh, altogether. Rescue craft are searching for a catamaran in trouble off the KwaZulu-Natal south coast. The National Sea Rescue Institute says the vessel has a rope around one propeller, making one of her two motors unusable, a torn sail, and an overheated second motor. NSRI spokesperson Craig Lavenon says three members of the six-person crew of the Tolile are severely dehydrated after prolonged sea sickness. The crew, all from Durban, comprises five men and one woman. Rescuers believe the yacht has drifted far south off Port Edward. The 2.1 million rand in pledges to the Widows and Orphans Fund to assist families of police officers who've died in the line of duty is nearing its goal with over 1.8 million rand in the bank so far. The fund set up by Crimeline and the Schott Foundation is expected to make the first payments in the next few weeks. Head of Crimeline, Yusuf Abramji. We believe that these donations from the public and from the corporates will make a major difference in bringing not only a smile to the faces of the orphans, the widows and the families, but it will be an early Christmas present. We appeal to South Africans to continue to donate to the Police Widow and Orphan Fund and make a small way in which we are saying to the fallen heroes and their families that we recognize you and we appreciate that you sacrificed your life in the line of duty. An American has been killed and another wounded at a building in the Afghan capital, Kabul, operated by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. The U.S. Embassy says an Afghan employee was responsible and was shot dead. The BBC's Paul Wood reports. Late on Sunday night, the center of Kabul echoed to the sounds of a gun battle and then of helicopters flying in to evacuate the wounded. This took place at the Ariana Hotel compound, used as the headquarters of the American CIA in the city. It's understood that an Afghan employee of the agency started shooting. According to one source, he was firing in all directions. 
As staff ran for cover, one U.S. citizen was killed and another wounded before the gunman was shot dead, apparently by the guards on duty. A large inflatable pig is again flying above London's Battersea Power Station in a stunt designed to mark the reissue of British band Pink Floyd's 14 studio albums by record label EMI Music. The event is being held 35 years after the making of the album cover for animals featuring a similar flying pig. The original pig slipped its moorings in December 1976 and floated into the Heathrow Airport flight path before being recovered by a farmer in Kent. And top story this hour, the Medical Protection Society says it has had to increase the annual subscription fee for private doctors by about 185% in the past two years to keep up with escalating claims.